breathtaking landscapes, unfathomable mysteries. Nature thrills our hearts and calls us to adventure. Earth is a precious miracle, billions of years in the making. Now, the natural world is under threat. Wild and beautiful places are disappearing fast. 16 million hectares of natural forests destroyed every year. One third of all coral threatened with extinction. Glaciers melting, sea levels rising. This isn't a movie, this is real. It's time to step forward and find out what's happening. It's time to listen to the adventurers on the front lines. We search the globe for these behind the scenes eco heroes passionate about protecting the planet and securing a sustainable future. What drives them to save the beyond? We travel to Australia to one of the world's natural wonders, the Great Barrier Reef. At almost 350,000 kilometers in size, it is the world's largest reef system. Here we find our eco-hero Nathan Cook, marine scientist and reef restoration expert. Nathan specializes in innovative solutions to environmental challenges facing tropical marine ecosystems and the people who love and depend upon them. What drives him to save the beyond? The Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef ecosystem on the planet. It can be seen from outer space. It covers 2,300 kilometres of the North Queensland coastline, made up of 3,000 individual coral reefs. It's amazingly diverse, it's wonderfully beautiful, and for millennia it's been extremely pristine, and that's how many people will remember it. 30 years ago, this place was uh, on land, looking much like it does now. In the water, it was full of life, and the reefs were very beautiful, very spectacular. That was 30 years ago, and so all the damage that we've seen has been done since that time. One of the active reef restoration techniques that we specialise in is what's called coral gardening. It's nothing new, it's been going on around the world for uh, over 20 years. And we take fragments from donor corals, or we might find them loose around the reef, and we transplant them to areas that have been degraded. So we can attach these to the reef using cement or two-part epoxies. And once they've got that stable base, they can grow in that new location and hopefully help regenerate that degraded reef. So with recent disturbances threatening the health of ecosystems like the Great Barrier Reef. There's a lot of people and different agencies working to develop solutions to assist the recovery, stewardship, custodian abilities of people interacting with the Great Barrier Reef. I first saw mass bleaching in Ishigaki Island. I was studying the corals of Japan and I came across this patch where all oh, well, dead, everything was white. And I thought someone had tipped poison or something into the water, but then no road goes to the southern tip of Ishiyaki Island. What's it doing? And then I realised this was the first time I'd ever seen a mass bleaching. The messages and the, and the story is quite complex. You know, what happens to corals when they bleach and how they might or might not die depending on what happens to them. It's, it's not as cut and dried as we would all like it to be. With a complicated message, you need to develop innovative ideas to be able to educate people, make them aware of the issues and what they can do to be involved in some of the solutions. 30 years ago, we had 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, that makes it a rare gas. Now we have 400, we'll hit 500 parts per million. This will happen, it can't not happen. Everyone can make a difference in trying to support the health of these ecosystems. If we all contribute our little bit, it's that whole economies of scale that's going to make a difference to our global community and really impact these ecosystems. We continue our search of the globe for eco-heroes, shedding light on their vital work, inspiring each and every one of us to become heroes too. Together, we have the power to save the beyond.